Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is a retired physician from Somerset, also founded an organization called Health Watch USA a number of years ago. He writes a lot. Of, he writes a lot. You see his editorials very frequently in the Lexington Herald Leader and in the Louisville Courier Journal. Good morning, Dr. K. Good morning, Jack. Let me ask you this. When did you start Health Watch USA and why did you start it? Well, we started it way back about 2005, 2008, and it was started mainly to promote health care quality, and we centered on infectious disease. We noticed some deficits in quality, and we felt that infectious disease was one of the areas that we really wanted to focus on because it was nurse-sensitive, meaning you had to have adequate nursing, you had to have adequate protocols in the hospital, and all of this would be required. And because of that, this was sort of our expertise for the last 10, 20 years. And that's been really, I think, very beneficial to help us out in this pandemic. And we've grown, as you know, from a small state organization to a national and now even international organization, where when we have meetings, we have usually a few doctors from around the globe that are calling in on Zoom to attend and hear our meeting conferences and lectures that we're having. All right. If you have a question or a comment to uh, add this morning, we want to hear it at 253-5959. That is our phone line, but it is also uh, our text line, the WVLK text line, if you'd like to send a text to Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Let's start with tests. They say four per uh, address and that's free you gotta order them you get eight per month tell us the details on that government uh, situation well yes you have to go on to the government website order the tests you get four per household from what i understand that's going to be four per household and reoccurring possibly once a month these tests are unfortunately appear to be coming off the free market so that we've had at least some governors, for example, Larry Hogan stating his state now has difficulty obtaining the tests. So it may be more like a shell game for some people, but for others, it's providing them tests they would not otherwise be able to obtain. And that is very important. And it also provides free tests. So test is key. And also, as you said, there is a program now to provide three masks. And the masks will be three per person, not per household. And those can be picked up at a pharmacy. Those will actually come out of the United States strategic stockpile for which they have 750 million masks. These are N95 masks and 40 million will be distributed to United States citizens. And this is good. If you remember... I think it was back in 2020, we were talking about Singapore, how they had three N95 masks in their stockpile per citizen, and they were able to get these distributed and encouraged our government at that time to do the same. And now it looks like we're finally getting our N95 masks out and rapid testing out. So I'm very pleased at these initiatives. How big a toll has Omicron uh, had on the economy? Well, the U.S. Census Bureau had some early answers. From December 29th to January 10th, more than 14 million Americans did not work at some point because they had COVID. They were uh, caring for someone with COVID or they had to stay at home with a child whose school or daycare was closed. Another 3.2 million people reportedly stopped working at some point over the nearly two week span because they were concerned about getting or spreading coronavirus, and nearly 7 million people stopped working because they were furloughed or laid off, their employer closed temporarily, or the employer went out of business entirely because of COVID. So we spend so much time, of course, as we should, talking about the health benefits of being vaccinated and boosted and all that stuff, but it's also hitting us in the wallet, isn't it? Well, that's correct. As you know, if you have mass sickness, even mild disease, you're going to have worker layoffs. And in Kentucky, we have not had any mandated closures that I know of since 2020, since about the summer of 2020. So it's not due to government mandates. It's simply 
due to the disease and the disease spreading. On top of this, Jack, you have the cost of health care. As calculated oh, yeah. by insurance allowables from Fair Health, Kentucky has spent almost $1 billion on health care in hospitals. And that is, that's unsustainable. That's not counting outpatient care for getting the infusions or counting the care for chronic disability caused by long COVID. So all of this is absolutely unsustainable, which is why you need to get vaccinated. And those that say, well, you know, these vaccines aren't effective. That's what I'm hearing from many of our leaders. They're talking about preventing of infections, which a lot of times when you're vaccinated or asymptomatic, our hospitals are filling with unvaccinated people. Over 80% of those in the hospital are unvaccinated and over 90% in the ICUs are unvaccinated. So vaccinations, even with Omicron, they are protecting against hospitalizations and deaths. Not 100%, but good protection. Your chances are you'll have a milder disease and Pfizer and Moderna are coming out, both of them are coming out with an Omicron specific vaccine, hopefully by the end of March. So remember, even back in 2020, we we're saying to get a vaccine, probably have to be updated yearly. Now it looks like after two years, we're getting an update. I think that should have maybe been done a bit sooner, but this virus has been mutating very fast and evolving very fast. So it's hard to catch up with vaccine production. Uh, let's take a call, but we'll take a break. Hey, Debbie, you're on with Dr. K. Good morning. Hi, morning. I have a question about the free tests that are now available. Do they test for all variants or are they specifically made to recognize just certain variants? Right now, the tests test for all variants because these rapid tests are antigen tests. They're not necessarily specific for the spike protein, but they are specific for SARS-CoV-2 or the virus which causes COVID-19. Now, I can tell you that in one of our family units, we had a outbreak of COVID. They were fully vaccinated, but the tests, these were rapid tests, performed very well. Two of the children went to daycare picked up the virus, both became symptomatic, both rapid tests were positive at that time. The father, he was negative, but he didn't have symptoms. Three days later, he became symptomatic, he was positive. And I should add, at the time he was negative, he also had a PCR test, which was negative. Mother became symptomatic, at the time she was symptomatic, the rapid test was also positive. So in this case, and this is just my personal experience, they seem to predict peak infectivity at the time of symptom onset fairly well. So yes, I think these rapid tests work quite well with Omicron. And this occurred in January, so it's during the Omicron spike. Debbie, thanks. Does that help? It does. Uh, we are planning a trip in April to see a new granddaughter and I was going to go ahead and buy some tests and then I thought maybe I should wait. There may be, you know, a new variant out by then, but um, we just wanted yeah, to take them before before we see that baby. <laughs> and if you have private insurance, they should be reimbursable. Unfortunately, for us high-risk older individuals, the reimbursement is not going to occur with Medicare. So that, I think, is a mistake on the part of the Biden administration. Dr. K, as well as Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, and uh, quickly running out of time. Let's go to the phones. Hey, Carl, you're on with Dr. K. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Uh, I was in a Lexington hospital for pre-admission testing. Uh, the COVID test returned positive. I had no symptoms. The following day, I uh, did the home test. Uh, it was negative and then went in for a rapid test at an urgent treatment center. It was negative. I reported this to the hospital, and uh, the folks at the hospital told me that those two tests were not accurate, uh, not to rely on them. Can you speak to that? Well, the PCR test should be highly, highly accurate. So, you know, if that was negative, I think that's pretty good evidence that you're not really infectious. The rapid test, that is designed to pick up people during their peak infectivity. If they're positive, they tend to be very accurate. 
However, if they're negative, you still can have an infection. That's one of the reasons why they're in packages of two. So if you're worried about your infection, you supposedly should get one at the time of symptom onset and then do the other one a few days later. So they're not really that good with just a single test to rule out an infection. But with two tests, you start to get more accuracy. This is one of the reasons why many countries have protocols when they use rapid tests for return to work or for screening people at work. They're doing it every day or three times a week. So rapid tests, if they're negative, does not mean you're not infectious or have had an infection. PCR testing is more accurate to answer that question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's pretty strange. Um, 92%. 92% of people in Fayette County intensive care units are unvaccinated. Is that correct? That's what's being reported, and that's what I'm hearing around the nation, which is a huge reason why you should get vaccinated. Doesn't matter whether you've had a previous infection. Doesn't matter whether you've had a two-dose vaccine. Both are not providing enough protection with Omicron. If time goes on, your immunity will wane and you need to get a booster. And that's one of the reasons why I think we're seeing such a high peak is that people believe that, well, this is just a mild disease. Well, it's a mild disease if your immunity is high. In other words, if you've recently had a vaccination or if you recently had a severe infection, you could expect some degree of protection and stay out of the hospital and stay out of the ICU. But boosters are important for everybody, especially if it's been some time since you've had the vaccination or infection. And I understand Kentucky, there's a county in our state that saw a surge in COVID-19 and it was tied to attendance at a, at a basketball game. Can you address that real quick? Yes, Harlan County, there were 200 cases that were tied to two sporting events and they were case tracked and placed back to these two super spreader events. And that's what I suspect is being happened. Much of our safety assurance is because of lack of data rather than actually doing case tracking to see if things are safe. And basketball, which can be indoors, people are very crammed. You're going to get droplet spread. You're going to get some aerosol spread. They are a setup to spread this disease. This virus does not care about the type of event. It will spread when it's given an opportunity to do so. Thank you, doctor. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you Monday. Thank you, sir.